This is a skeleton missing a snow golem and killing the ender dragon all by itself with no players. But let's backtrack a bit. Mobs in Minecraft are inherently random, driven by certain code that makes them do what they do. But is there a Minecraft world where those random series of movements eventually come together to beat the game all on their own? Can Minecraft beat itself without any players at all? Today we'll be seeing if it's even possible for mobs to beat the game on their own, calculating what the probability of it is and finding out if there's a Minecraft seed where you can watch it happen yourself. I mean, there's no way, right? Or is there? This is the team that's going to beat Minecraft. We also have this guy on the bench, but he's kind of a wild card. The Enderman's role on the team is pretty obvious. They're the only mobs in the game that can place and remove blocks. Granted, this selection is pretty limited, but it's essential to beating Minecraft without the player. It allows them to build structures the other mobs can use. They can also teleport into whatever structure they'd like and snag a few extra blocks. So let's assume that in this Minecraft world, a group of Endermen decided to randomly pathfind to the nearest stronghold. Whoa, 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 whoa whoa, that's not possible. Or is it? Before we actually start looking for a Minecraft seed where this happens, we have to understand how it would even be possible for mobs to beat the game on their own. Mobs at their core are driven by target code. They select a random block, a target in an area around them, walk to it, wait, and then do it all again. This gives them the random motion that we're used to. So let's say, for instance, we had a pig here. It can pathfind to any of the blocks around it, but there is a certain chance, albeit very low, that it chooses this block, then this one, then this one, allowing it to pathfind straight to the edge. Unlikely, but technically possible, especially given enough time. So again, let's assume that in in this Minecraft world, a group of Endermen randomly decide to pathfind to the nearest stronghold. Again, the probability of this is extremely, extremely low, and it would take years. But we're not considering what is probable, we're considering what is possible given infinite time. And given infinite time, a group of Endermen could absolutely walk to the stronghold. But here we run into our first barrier, digging. The Endermen can remove dirt and grass, but they can't excavate snow, nor can they actually even dig down. And as end portals generate pretty deep underground, or we're gonna need a way to dig. Enter the creeper and the snow golem. If a snow golem and creeper were to join our party at just the right distance, the snow golem would aggro the creeper, which would then explode, digging into the ground. Have this repeat a bunch more times, and our two kamikaze miners have dug a path right to the portal room. But if you're observant, you might be asking something. How on earth did the snow golem get here? These guys don't just spawn naturally, a player needs to build them to life. Well, that's almost true. Well, snow golems don't just appear in the wild <clears throat> anymore, they don't have to be built by a player. This introduces the debatably more useful mechanic of the Endermen, their ability to bring snow golems to life. Endermen can pick up snow and they can pick up pumpkins. Carved pumpkins can naturally generate in pillager outposts and woodland mansions, and all an Enderman has to do is place two blocks of snow, steal a pumpkin, and complete the golem. Now we have a working mining system. It's worth pointing out there is another way to do this. TNT provides a stronger explosion than creepers, and endermen can pick up TNT. Naturally, generating TNT is a little more rare to come by. As you may already know, it's abundant in desert temples, but endermen can't pick up the sandstone to uncover it. Instead, the only place to go would be the fake portal room hidden in woodland mansions. As for the activation, that's where our wild card comes in. Skeletons have a chance to generate naturally with a flame bow. If one of these skeletons tries to shoot our snow golem and misses, it can hit an enderman place TNT and start digging that way. So, does it matter? matter which method we use. Now I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I'm not using the TNT and skeletons method because it's more unlikely and rare than the creeper method because frankly it would be disgusting to say any one of these methods is more likely than the other when they are both infinitely impossible and unlikely to happen. Instead, the main reason I'm using creepers is because about a year and a half ago Retro Gaming Now made a really similar video that inspired this one and he mostly used skeletons and I'm not trying to make an exact copy of his video. So after you finish this one, Definitely check out Retros. It's different, it's awesome, and it's totally worth the watch. So perfect, we've made it to the portal. One more problem, how do we get in? This is a multi-layered problem. The first and most obvious layer is the eyes. None of our mobs can place Eyes of Ender, and as a result, the only way mobs can beat Minecraft is if they were playing on a 12 eye world where the portal is already lit. But don't worry, this one in a trillion chance pales in comparison to the odds of literally anything else in our plan happening. 
happening. The other layer is a bit more challenging, chunk loading. Anything that goes into the end can't just load the end. Stuff can't happen in another dimension if a player isn't there to look over it. Even worse, mobs don't act independently. The thing with mobs is they actually don't do anything on their own, they have to be within a certain radius of the player in order to actually move around. So without a player, our mobs can definitely jump into the end portal, but nothing will happen and they will never exist on the other side unless we find a way to load those chunks. That's where this guy comes in. You may have noticed I've been neglecting one part of our team, the goat, and it has arguably one of the most important roles of all, moving the player. Our player isn't allowed to do anything in this mob playthrough, but in order for the world to even exist and load in the first place, he does have to be there. And goats do nine blocks of knockback to AFK players. So a safe distance away from all the creepers and endermen, a goat will be continuously headbutting our player towards the stronghold and into the end portal, loading the chunks on the other side. Technically, you'd actually need two players, one to load the overworld and one to load the end, both headbutted by goats. But wait, because just like mobs working together to beat the game, you can all work together to build an insane mansion, because whenever someone subscribes to this channel, this code will automatically find the average color of their profile picture, map it to the most similar Minecraft block, and add it to the outline of this giant mansion. My most recent subscriber was Perky System, and their average profile picture color mapped to blue terracotta, and now the first block is placed. To subscribe to claim your own unique block, and let's build the weirdest looking mansion ever. When the mansion is done, I'll post the results in my Discord, so join there to see them. But with the goats and chunk loading problem settled, we yet again run into a roadblock, the initial end spawn platform. There are two problem scenarios, and both of them are not ideal. Scenario one, we spawn inside a cage and the mobs have to dig out. This may not seem bad, but then you realize the player has to be there. We could theoretically excavate with explosions, but our end loader will absolutely die if a creeper or TNT explodes on him point blank. Problem scenario two, a gap. If the mobs spawn on a void platform sufficiently far away from the main end island, they obviously won't be able to make it across. Endermen can't bridge over air, so making a bridge to cross the void is out of the question. It seems like both of these scenarios just result in an instant loss. Do we just have to bank on a convenient end portal? No, actually. The problem stems from understanding exactly what we need. We need to kill the dragon, and for that, we need to kill the end crystals. This may seem like we need to get a skeleton and TNT or a creeper to pillar up to the end crystals and explode, but that's actually not true at all. All we need is a snow golem. A snow golem won't willingly fire at an end crystal, but if an enderman builds a snow golem then just walks to the other side of the crystal, the snow golem won't realize there's something in the way and fire, exploding the crystal for us. The cage situation is a bit more difficult, but all an enderman has to do is make a staircase of blocks going upwards, spawn a snow golem on a platform like this, teleport inside the crystal cage, and the snow golem will eventually hit the crystal. This completely bypasses the problem of the void. An enderman holding a snow block and pumpkin can just teleport the gap and build as many snowmen as it needs on the other side. The problem inside the endstone is solved with just a little bit of knowledge about explosions. Explosions do damage to players based on the distance to their feet. If an enderman just places a few blocks of dirt in between the player and the TNT, a skeleton with a flame bow and a good old snowman can detonate the explosive and it'll do no damage at all. And just like that, we can continue this process to build a tunnel. The enderman can surround the player with blocks each time so the skeleton doesn't aggro onto him, and just like that we've solved our issue, and we're onto the final step of beating the game, killing the dragon. In the cage scenario, this isn't much of an issue. A creeper walks into the end portal, you wait for the dragon to perch, and you either bomb it a good hundred times or you stockpile TNT and bomb it a few times with a skeleton. The gap scenario, though, is a challenge. We can't use creepers or skeletons because the platform is too far away and we can't bridge. Snow golems can't deal damage to the dragon, nor can they detonate TNT. Again, it seems like we've totally lost, but we haven't. All we need is a fuse. If an enderman makes our gargantuan TNT, TNT monstrosity and then a little fuse made out of TNT blocks, all it takes is one bad arrow from the platform and the dragon is done. Just think about how awesome that is. Given the right random numbers doing random things, mobs could beat Minecraft entirely on their own. <laughs>
that's insane. But what are the chances it actually happens? Is there a Minecraft world where we can watch this happen? Well, to answer that, consider this simple snowman building 24 by 24 grid. Let's say there's an enderman in this corner and we want him to build a snow golem over here. What are the odds that it happens? This part is going to involve a little bit of bath just so you can see where I'm coming from, which for the sake of this video length will be a little rushed, so if you want to skip, go to this time on screen. The first thing that needs to happen is the enderman needs to grab snow. For that, he needs to pathfind or teleport to any one of these 58 blocks. He can teleport to any of the 576 blocks in this grid, so the chance that he teleports to one of those is 58 out of 576, or roughly 10%. He can also walk, but since he only gets to pick a target 10 blocks away, he's limited to this space. So first he'll have to walk somewhere here, that's 1 out of 100 for each of these 70 blocks, and then he can pick his second walk target, Here's the math for each section. I'm just taking the probability that the Enderman walks to a given row of blocks from the total region they can walk to and summing that for all the rows in this red rectangle. That is a 2% chance. They grab a snow block without walking away. To be nice to the Enderman, I won't even account for this. Now they have to walk or teleport to the placement location. I'm just gonna give them two teleports because walking there is exceptionally unlikely. Place the snow here and not anywhere else along the way. Again, going to calculate way in their favor. Teleport back to the snow patch, do it again, teleport to any block in this rectangle, come back, play scaffolding, grab a pumpkin, you get the idea. So biasing all the math in the Enderman's favor, the chance of a single snow golem being constructed on this block is 1 in 286 Billy. That's one snow golem. The chance of mobs beating the game is so astronomically low, it's zero. But don't count it out just yet, because on this seed, it actually happens. As Retro pointed out, per the infinite monkey theorem, if you let monkeys type randomly forever, they'll one day write out the complete works of Shakespeare. And if you let mobs move randomly forever, they will one day beat Minecraft. On every single Minecraft seed, it'll just take a little while. So don't ever be discouraged by low chances, no matter how bad the odds. For it's those exact low odds of random particles colliding with other random particles that created something even more beautiful and amazing. You. And the chance of you existing, 1 in 10 to the power of 2.7 million, makes mobs beating the game look like an everyday occurrence. And you exist, don't you? So who's to say anything is really impossible? Thanks for watching, but even more so, thank you for existing. Peace out, see you next time.